All right, everyone, welcome back to the Mitchell Moore channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm Mitchell. This is my channel. Easy enough, right? Right now, the birds are chirping, the dogs are barking, and the first NBA game is Among Us. I'm excited. Hope you're excited as well. Probably not. I believe we are in for a special season. This offseason was full of drama. There was a lot of pieces moving around, a lot of superstars going from city to city. It's no longer about the big three. We are now entering... Sorry, white supremacist. Uh, problematic. We are now entering into a year of the dynamic duos. We saw Russ Westbrook get moved. We saw Brooklyn Nets somehow become relevant again. We saw the Lakers get Anthony Davis, which is freaking insane. So Lord knows what's gonna happen this NBA season. And to top it all off, we've got a few young studs uh, ready to show their capabilities in the NBA. And there's one in particular that everyone has their eye on, and that is Zion Williamson. If you by some chance do not know who Zion Williamson is, do yourself a favor, go pop some popcorn, grab a soda or pop if you're a weirdo, maybe some nachos, hot Cheetos, Takis, I don't care, whatever your snack of choice is, and YouTube this man's highlights, and you're in for a treat. He is a athletic specimen, to say the least. He can jump out the gym, he does whatever he wants on the basketball court, and it showed both in high school and in college. Both have great highlights, go watch them. For those of you that are already aware of him, he's insane. To me, he's the most athletic freak to come out of college basketball since maybe Blake Griffin, right? Like, he's the only guy who's already grown into his body for lack of better terms the dude is a goddamn mac truck and in college in high school for sure but in college even it showed he was a man amongst boys it, it was it was seriously child's play to him he did whatever he wanted to on the court whenever he wanted to except for maybe at the free throw line 60 something percent shooter but that's okay we can fix that once we get into the league we got we got Time to be working on that jumper. But how physically dominant he was was, was something that everyone knew. <laughs> I mean, if you do go back and watch his highlights and you by, by chance see some from him in high school, he was built like that then. Like, he's always been a beast. <laughs> and it's so funny because I can, you see that the, the little white boys that he plays against, such as myself, and I can already hear the opposing team's parents now just being like, well, I freed that boy. I guarantee he heard it at least once a game, if not multiple times a game. By the time of the end of his days at Duke, the end of his college career, his name was already headline stories every single day just about. The media picked up on that people wanted to hear about him because he was very likable. He was actually the first likable Duke player since... Ever, I guess. Yeah, yeah, basically ever. So, I mean, I like him and I, I hate Duke. So, there's that. I think it's just kind of the way he plays the game, you know? It seems like he has a, has a lot of fun. He seems like a genuine, like, nice guy. And he just wants to play basketball, which that's kind of all you want. So, that's why I like him. But anyways, sports media realizes that, you know, us as the consumer had kind of an infatuation with the guy. We couldn't get enough of them. So, they started writing stories that basically his name was a headline no matter what it was they were just shoving it down our throat and we were just eating it up like it was a freaking thanksgiving day turkey we couldn't get enough of it so we're partly to blame with how insufferable they've gotten with his coverage because they wanted easy money and we said feed us these headlines the river eventually runs dry pretty quickly you can only talk about one person so much if there's not a lot of activity happening in the day. That's why you see like the stupid stuff like when LeBron was celebrating at his son's AAU basketball game. To me, I thought it was cool. If I was on that AAU team, I'd be so hyped if I saw LeBron r running up and down the sideline. Just saying. For those of you that think that it's it's kind of petty, he could have gotten someone hurt, you know? He could have, but <laughs> it whatever. But eventually they're going to have to find some type of angle that everyone else is just like, what? There's a story that popped up about a month ago. Zion was playing in the summer league and that's usually where rookies kind of get acclimated to the, the longer game and the, the format that games are in and just test their bodies, get them back in shape a little bit, get some chemistry flowing with their new teammates. He was doing pretty well and then he had a little bit of a knee injury and the Pelicans, rightfully so, were like, God no, take him out. We haven't had anything good going for us in about three years. Anthony Davis just left us. Please, he's, he's got to be the face of the franchise. He has to carry us solely on his back for the next 10 years minimum. Set him, make sure he's healthy. And they did the right thing. That's what 
any logical person would have done. Then my man gets caught sitting down just on the bench, cheering on his teammates, I might add, being a good teammate. There's a lot of superstars that wouldn't even have shown up. They would have just stayed in the back in the training room, maybe watched it on the television. But they catch him at an angle, and he, he looks like he gained a few LBs. I don't know. I also think that the shirt's a little tight. Let's give my man benefit of the doubt. He is a professional athlete, for God's sake. They catch him in an angle that is very unflattering. It's, it's an angle I've seen many a people caught in before, and it's hard to live down. Prime example, Jason Duffner. There was a summer we called this the Duffner, setting like this. It's very unflattering. And you know what? I'm going to take the professional athlete side. I think that that shirt was a little tight for him. Can the training staff, can, can we please get him a shirt that fits him? Not one that hugs his, hugs his love handles like that? Like, that's ridiculous. But, of course, ESPN had to run with this. You have Seth Greenberg upon some, whatever, whatever show it is that he was, that he was on, saying that he, he knew Zion was at least three bills, 300 pounds, 300 plus. And he just goes on and on and on, saying that he's worried about it. And, man, I tell you what. I tell you what. It's not like he's Eddie Lacy, am I right? I mean, I guess Eddie Lacy is from New Orleans. But to be fair, he was in New Orleans for the first time. Well, he was living in New Orleans and he was probably experiencing a lot of the culture. On every corner, there is Cajun food and margaritas. You're going to have yourself a good time and maybe gain a few pounds. His knees hurt. He can't practice. He's going to get out of shape pretty quickly. But let's not forget, he's 18 and he's a professional athlete. It'll come off of him in a week or two at best. Not to mention the fact like you're going to take health and physical fitness advice from a guy that looks like this. He looks like he just got done managing a handful of Enterprise rental cars or whatever. They'll pick you up. So what if he gained the freshman 15 after his freshman year at Duke? We're all entitled to it. God, please know the second we as adults start judging other human beings for rapid weight gain and loss, we're, we're all screwed. We're all screwed. You have a stressful week or two at work, um, long hours. You know, you're just grabbing whatever you can, whenever you can to eat, and you gain 15 pounds. Judge! You and your spouse or significant other have a baby, you're sympathy eating, the weight lingers around. Judge! <laughs> you know, ESPN, just, just be better. That's all I'm asking. Just be better. Like I said, Blake Griffin's about the only one who even can remotely talk on this subject, and I have a feeling he's going to be alright with it, you know? But the reason that this popped up, or this came up to, to mind for me at least, was I recently saw a picture of Zion, and he's in shape. He's looking like a f***ing superhero again. He's looking like a superhero. Uh, <laughs> who'd have thought that an 18-year-old professional athlete could lose 15 pounds pretty quickly? Shocker, right? Like I said, not everyone's Eddie Lacy. Oh, yeah. And did I mention... He just signed with Brand Jordan, and it's supposed to be the largest rookie contract ever. So it sounds to me like the only thing fat about this man is his bank account. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, that's it for this video. Anything that I said about ESPN and Seth Greenberg, those, it's just jokes. I know Seth Greenberg. Uh, he's a former, I think, college basketball coach. I know that he's just running with whatever story ESPN wants him to run with. I genuinely don't think he's concerned about Zion's health because he knows that he's probably going to condition pretty well before the season. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you laughed a little bit or you liked the video, Hit, hit the like button, and uh, if you're new around here, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. See y'all. Eddie, if you by some chance see this, hopefully, hopefully you can get back in shape. Get back in the league, brother.